Thank you, Thierry. This is not a question. It is a comment to highlight how much it is important that the President of the Red Cross be uh, present in this kind of uh, institution. He was, of course, uh, in Paris also. Uh, it's very useful to really uh, be fully aware of the usefulness of, this, of the Red Cross. Of course, it's good for NGOs to denounce things, but I think it's uh, uh, absolutely necessary to maintain the legendary discretion of the Red Cross because it is the uh, absolute condition for the Red Cross to really play its full uh, role. I'm sure it would not. This would not be possible to save uh, to visit prisoners in certain uh, prisons in Africa uh, if uh, it were not for this. Uh, discretion. There are, for, for the rest, there are possible arrangements. And the uh, Red Cross can inform in uh, cases uh, where information is needed. I'm just going to uh, talk about the fact that at the Council, Security Council of the UN, it was customary, and I think I hope it still is the case, that the President of the Security Council uh, receive individually the uh, President of the Red Cross for a confidential meeting. So uh, it was usual to have a meeting with the delegate of the uh, Red Cross in New York, and I hope this custom is still uh, ongoing. Uh, also, the President of the uh, the European Union, uh, or the ambassador who represents the European Union uh, at the UN, used to receive uh, organized meetings uh, within the framework of the Council of Security with the delegate or the president, or even the president of the Red Cross, International Red Cross. This is something that is absolutely useful. This information that we get is not made public immediately, but it is absolutely necessary to really understand what's going on. As uh, this is my point of view, Monsieur de Jamais was among the representatives of France at the UN. First row, one question from the first row, and then I have to stop because time uh, is. Uh, I'm Olivier. I'm a second ambassador who has had the privilege of working with Peter. I see that uh, for the organization of this debate. Uh, homage that has been paid to the humanitarian work of the Red Cross, and I would like to thank you for this. Mr. Moore has talked about the complexity of the conflicts and the crises. Don't you think that there is a need to revisit international humanitarian law? We have the 49 conventions, the additional protocols of the 1967. Don't you think that after 41 years, uh, there is uh, a need to enhance, um, to further enhance the international human uh, law? Because this is uh, also an enhancement of in your impartiality and your neutrality. Mr. Chetrit, uh, for a very, very short uh, question. Sorry for the others. And then. Uh, and then the, uh, Mr. Moore will respond to these questions in two minutes. 45 seconds for the question. I would like to ask how if you were involved and how you were involved in the war in Syria. Thank you. Voilà. Donc, uh, so, last, very, last question is the easiest one. We have the greatest operation in the world in Syria of the, for the uh, Red Cross Committee for the past 30 years, the greatest operations that we have conducted. So you see, this reflects exactly what I have just said. It's one of the worst wars, uh, but we have this uh, capacity to act, which is uh, quite important, I must say. Uh, so it's by far the greatest operation of the uh, our uh, the Red Cross in the world. Now concerning the practice, uh, this practice that is uh, of receiving uh, the our representatives at the Security Council, but it's something that is even enhanced, multiplied. We have even more interfaces. Of course, they are protected. They are convention protected and confidential. The head of the delegation of the Red Cross at the Security Council because they have also broadened their activity in the humanitarian uh, area. They refer to the international human uh, laws. So we have multiplied our interfaces. 
sometimes uh, daily meetings and confidential meetings with the President of the Security Council and with other members of the uh, Security Council. Now, to revisit the law, yes or no, I think we have a, a quite differentiated approach now concerning this question. We think that the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols uh, remain uh, customary law and they're extremely relevant to solve the problems that we are faced with. But we're the first ones, of course, to agree that this uh, law does not have solutions for all the problems that we come across. Uh, probably uh, if we wanted to revisit these laws, I think what we need most and foremost is to have a more unified understanding among the states of what certain existing rules mean now in this new context. We, it's more of an interpretation that we need than a redefinition. But maybe later on uh, we may uh, we agree that there are gaps um, uh, in this law, international law, that need to be filled. So I think it's a problem of opportunity, which I'm launching right here in this room. Do you think that if we launch a process of uh, revisiting the uh, Geneva Conventions, do you think this is going to enhance our norms or it is going to weaken our norms? Realistically speaking, I must say that I don't think that uh, an international conference uh, of 194 or 95 uh, countries will uh, give us uh, uh, positive results or will enhance the protection of the citizens who are confronted to violence. This is probably also this. We adopt a programmatic approach in adapting, uh, interpreting uh, uh, this law that we are now uh, this is our priority now. Our priority now is the confidential commitment with the state, with the armed forces, to make sure that at least the law that exists is uh, enforced uh, seriously and rigorously. Thank you. To conclude, two words uh, in terms of conclusion. The first one is I wish that this question of a humanitarian uh, right and law be more and more parcel integrated within the World Policy Conference because it's something that needs to be known and it's something that is essential, especially in a world that is uh, characterized by uh, conflicts. These issues now are uh, extremely relevant. And then my second proposal is to ask you to give a round of applause to two people the physical person that you have here, Peter Maurer, who is an illegal person, of course, which is the International Red Cross.